Well, for better or worse, the pandemic changed the way we look at work. Hybrid and remote employment options have been high on the agenda and open plan offices might become a thing of the past. Now, away from the CBD and into the country, even the future of fruit picking looks vastly different down under. To tell us more, we welcome back uh, futurist and author Michael McQueen. Hello, mate. Nice to see you again. Hi, Michael. Uh, there's a cheeky name for hybrid workers. Uh, but is it is it bad for business? This one, yes. Yeah, so they're, they're called the twats, which is like the British version of twat, not the American one. So twats, so people that come into the office Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, so the middle of the weekdays. And Wednesday is the busiest day um, coming into the cities. So the impact of this is massive in terms of. So in the US, last week some data was released: 60 million hours a day is being saved in commute time. People not having to go to the office, saving about five and a half grand every year in like commuting costs. So great for employees, not so great for businesses sometimes, depending on the industry. It's a bit of a, a nervousness of employers, like, are my staff as productive at home as they were? But this is the question. But you see bosses getting a little bit cynical when yeah, yeah. people are taking the Monday and the Friday off. Correct. Oh, so I've got a long weekend, <laughs> an week. extra long weekend every week. Yep. You can see why they get a little bit cynical. There is a sorry, it is worth saying that you, you call me that and I work five days a week. <laughs> <laughs> there is a push for a four-day working week in Victoria. Yeah. Um, where are we at with that? Do you so, see it happening? Yeah, so it's been a lot of talk about this for the last 12 or 18 months. So a couple of trials in Scotland, in Spain, in Japan. But it's still an, a fairly early on idea here in Australia, so we'll see it's specifically Victorian as the plan, so we'll see how that plays out. All right, South Korea, they're uh, welcoming robots right there into the yeah. office space, right? Yeah, so this is a company called Naver, which is like Google of South Korea, and these are a hundred of these robots. They deliver food or coffee or packages to your desk, and they're apparently very clever, but I must say this sort of robotic tech still has its L plates on. There was actually a story a few weeks ago of a similar robot like this that actually was delivering um, a parcel to a home in the US in Los Angeles and rolled through a crime scene because they didn't recognise oh. what a crime scene was. So oh. it's pretty clever, but it's still getting there in terms now. of its acuity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's what that yellow tape means. That's what that's it. Um, what about picking fruit? We saw that in the in the intro. Yeah, so I mean the big challenge for agriculture is getting staff. And so we're seeing a couple of really interesting Aussie companies coming to the fore. So Ripe Robotics and Lyro, I know is another one. These are companies for picking the fruit but also packing it into boxes for supply chain issues. So we're seeing this as a really big growth area for robotics just because we can't get the staff to do the work. Okay, and an Aussie company is leading the way in agriculture. We're going to talk about these smart glasses. Yeah. What's with this? So Bondi Labs is the company. They're producing these glasses that use augmented reality for people in meat processing to be able to track and trace meat as it goes through the production line. So it's a much more safe way to you know, make sure that we've got you know food security, that we can actually track and trace things as they move throughout the supply chain, what, which is one of the big issues right now. What, like detecting if something like needles in strawberries, or you mean like fat content? So things like fat content but also the source and location of where it's up to so you can actually trace a piece of meat all the way through the supply chain know where it got packed what's in a box without having to unpack the box so it just makes creates a lot more visibility throughout the supply chain <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Why did I say that was no, so funny? No, I just want to know what that would read if someone wearing those glasses was looking at you. I wonder <laughs> what that would say, like where you've come from, it where you're going. It would say succulent. <laughs> Um, nice to see you. Likewise. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> okay.